Hey hey y'all welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be someone interviewing me well it's kind of like a ping pong style interview but pretty much i am partnering up with drea i'll have her channel and stuff down below but pretty much we just talked about our journey to law school talked about being non-traditional students she's actually doing the georgetown evening program so she'll talk about the evening program a little bit as well but yeah of course i'll be back at the end for an outro Keep in mind, guys, I'm good at interviewing people. I'm not so good at being interviewed, but yeah, still a very good video. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll be back at the end. So why don't we get started? Thanks for agreeing to do a collab today. I feel like there are not many, um, or maybe there are, and I'm just not saying them, or not, there are not many Black women, especially that are doing YouTube and talking about their experience and applying to law school and going to law school. Um, so it's good to get someone together on that. And then, so I guess we should start with um, our personal backgrounds. Um, where are you from? What's your job? What, you know, what'd you do in undergrad, hobbies, things like that? Okay, so I'm Latasia. Um, I have the Law Alive YouTube channel. I'm from Alabama originally. I live in Atlanta right now. Um, for my job, I do like procurement. I'm a consultant for like um, a Fortune 500 company. I don't like to say the company online. No, you're good. Look you're good, I totally understand. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. I don't like to say it, but yeah. So I've been working there for like almost four years. Um, in terms of hobbies, I don't really do much now. Like YouTube, really, and then I'm starting like a merchandise line. So I'll be spending a lot of time like trying to design the hats and the shirts and my logo, stuff like that. But really, just like trying to get ready to move for law school. So that's awesome. Um, and from my perspective, uh, my obviously I'm Drea. Um, I work for the government, and uh, similar to you, I don't you know, want to put my personal life on blast on YouTube for many reasons. So I'll leave it there. Um, and I went to, I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I went to Howard University for undergrad and I've been in the DC area ever since. Love it in DC. I don't know if I would, I couldn't trade it for anything, but then I also, I don't know any better. So there's that too. Um, hobby wise, I, uh, I like to run. And YouTube is definitely a hobby. I don't know if, you know, I watch or I think I watch videos a lot more than I, I make videos, but that's a, that's a completely different story. Um, so why don't we move on to like where you're, I, I know that you're still deciding on where you'd like to go to law school. Is that right? No, I know. I'm just not announcing it yet. Fair enough. Okay. Well, good for you. You don't have to, I'm not going to pressure you into announcing anything like that now. Um, but that being said, I mean, what helped you kind of narrow down where you were going to go to law school without you disclosing any information that you don't feel comfortable disclosing? No, so for me, it was really just based off of scholarship money, obviously, based off of somewhere that I would like living like for three years or maybe potentially you know, long term after that. Mm -hmm. Also, what type of law I want to practice and then just like talking to different people like the professors, the students, talking to admissions, just like the vibe that I was getting from each school. That was kind of the big thing for me because, you know, we weren't able to visit a lot of schools if you're applying right now. Oh my now. gosh, yeah. <laughs> just really talking to people and seeing like, do I like the vibe you're giving me? Do I mm -hmm. feel like I at the school based on the people that I'm talking to. So that was it really for me. That makes sense. Um, and for me, I think my biggest deciding factor was definitely money. Um, I think, you know, there's, I think there's a lot of advice out in folks who have gone to law school, like, oh, you should go to the best school you go to, no matter how much it costs. And I think the current like student loan debt crisis is the biggest proof that I need that that is the dumbest approach that someone could take to law school, especially if they are not rich. Um, mind you, a lot of people that go to law school are rich. So there's, you know, might not have those same experiences. Um, but yeah, mine was money convenience. Like I, like I mentioned, I live in DC. Um, so I'm going to go to school in DC. I feel like that makes sense. Um, and then also like the location and my proximity to a community that I felt like I would be comfortable in. Like, I feel like it's a thing that a lot of people don't talk about is, for example, like, where are you going to school? And are there black people there that will make you feel comfortable in your surroundings? Like, are you going to be the, you know, only black person in every class? Are you comfortable with that? Some people are more comfortable with that than others. Um, and I don't know, I think there's, there's a lot to be said. But do you have any thoughts on, for example, like, was that a part of your deciding factor in anything? Whether, you know, there were decent numbers of, you know, underrepresented minority students or just people of color on the campus? 
So honestly, it wasn't at the beginning. I think it's just because of where I'm from, though. Like being from Alabama, going to UAH in Alabama, in Huntsville, being like one of the maybe two or three people in a class anyways, to me, it was never a big deal. Even like in my work environment, it's mm-hmm. just always for me, I don't think I, I don't think I thought about it much. I will say though that as I started going through the process, and then people started saying, "Well, you know, you may want to think about this, you may want to think about that." Then it started, you know, weighing heavily on me. But honestly, I don't know if it paid. I don't know if it played that much in my decision. Long? No, I don't think it really did though. I think I thought about it, but no, I think I'm the one of the people that like I don't really care. I'll like make a That's space. So you said you'll make a space for yourself. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a good point. I think, you know, and I think because I have to do that at work every day, like I'm exhausted and having to make a space for myself to an extent. And I mean, mind you, like Georgetown has like 7% of their, you know, law student body as black people. So like, I'm not really, you know, going to a place that's going to have like an abundance of black students, but I think the city itself and having like that example, having that network, at least for me, goes a long way. Um, and that was part of one of my deciding factors. So, um, all right. And then other, other questions, like what helped you eliminate some schools from your list? Um, it, you applied to a lot of schools from what I've seen. And then were there any things that you're like, oh, like as soon as you see that, you're like, oh, hell no, like I'm not doing this. Um, so I think for me, in terms of like when I got all my sentences back, I think I was able to narrow down a lot of them just based off of the money. I was like, no. For that ranking and this money, that's not happening. I'm not going there. Mm-hmm. And then schools, um, I think it was based off of me just having to really sit down and say, would you like living here? Do you like the people that you've talked to? Do you really think that if you got stuck in that state after you graduated, you would be happy? Do you really think that you'll be able to take the type of classes that you want at that school based off of the type of law you want to practice? Because being that I want to do entertainment law, there's not a lot of schools that like specialize in it, honestly. Sure. There's maybe like four or five, I think. So mm-hmm. for me, that was the big thing at the end. Just looking at the money and then thinking like long term, what can this school really do for me? Yeah, that's a good point. And especially, I mean, in terms of like California, obviously having a huge foot up on any other place um, on a lot of that, that makes... A lot of sense, I think. Um, and then, so in terms of, let's see, how how did support systems kind of factor into your decision? Like, does, and I know that this is another thing that folks don't talk about as much, but is having family or friends or a network um, that you're already familiar with impact any of the choices that you've made in terms of law school as well? Um. No, not really. I did have a mentor that I worked for when I was an undergrad. She's an attorney. I did talk to her about the process. I've been talking to her about the process for like, oh my gosh, seven years now, I think. So, so her, you know, her opinion kind of played a part, but no, not really. I don't really have a lot of family members to know much about law school. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, that's a good point. I also like, I have zero. So I was just going into this entire process blind and more like, what am I getting myself into? And then, so in terms of you learning things, did you, you like you, you mentioned, you had mentors. I also had a lot of mentors and would just call people up and I'm like, I don't know what any of this means. Like, can you please explain this to me? Um, do you think that you, I mean, obviously, do you think there's any advantage to having folks that are close to you, having family members that have gone to law school? I mean, obviously the process changes a lot in a very short amount of time. And I think folks that are, you know, going through COVID specifically, um, have a very unique experience and even folks that went to law school a year ago had a radically different experience but do you think there's a benefit to having people close in your circle to be a mentor or to give you advice throughout the process i think so i think definitely being able to talk to people about things so you don't have to spend the time running it yourself just saves you time in the process like i think there's a lot of time i spend researching that i could have spent actually doing if that makes any sense so yeah. i think talk to definitely helps but I also think that you can find people along the way you just have to know about those resources because I actually gained like a lot of mentors like while I was applying if that makes any sense so I think you just have to be somebody that's like willing to go out and look for the mentors too that's a big thing too because some people are like really shy during this process and I don't think I would know as much as I know if I was shy I don't Mm -hmm. think so (laughs) yeah that that makes a lot of sense um, and then, so two questions, one that has to do with COVID. So how did COVID kind of impact your overall admission cycle? I didn't get to go visit 
I only got to visit one school. Well, okay, so I got to visit UNC and Emory before everything. But besides that, I wasn't able to visit any schools. So I think that kind of had like a big impact because there were plenty of schools I wanted to see that I wasn't able to go see. So I think that, and then I think also just like this whole process, it just became like even more stressful for me because I don't know. It just feels weird going right now. Like even the possibility of like online classes, I'm yeah. not happy about. It doesn't sit well with me at all. So I think this whole process has just been completely feel, like flipped upside down for me. So I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. And and I think in terms of visiting campuses, that's a huge, huge letdown and not knowing what does this campus actually look like? How close are my dorms going to be to my classes? Those little little details that you kind of don't get flagged for you as much, it makes a big difference. Um, and it's been frustrating. I know that some schools have done virtual tours of their campuses, but that just at the end of the day is not the same thing. Um, and I had a ser- similar experience where COVID really dictated like, you know, whether, for example, I even stayed on wait lists for some of the schools that I applied to um, because I was like, well, even if they let me in, do I want to pick up all my things, try to find an apartment during a pandemic? Do I want to try to, you know, reinvent my entire social life? Do I want to reinvent myself in, an, in a brand new city um, during a pandemic? And is that something that's going to be conducive to my mental health? And is that going to be conducive to my ability to study and to, you know, maintain self-care? And for me, that was like a big no. Um, And I know that everyone has a very radically different experience around that. But for me, I was just like, why, you know, law school is going to be exhausting and it's going to be hard. And nothing about making it harder for myself seemed to like, or at least from my perspective, seemed like an attractive um, option for me. So... (laughs) I was, I was a little intimidated by a lot of the other things that came along with um, moving to another city. So but that's where I am. Um, and then what is some great advice that a mentor gave you um, that kind of stuck with you throughout your admissions process? Um, I think it was, it's kind of weird that her advice was really like to not care about what other people think because she was giving me her opinion. <laughs> well, that's good, but I think that's, that's a good point to make though. Yeah, it was pretty much just like you decide the best school for you. Like, don't base it off of the T14. Don't base it off of even your family. Base it off of what feels good to you. So I think that was the best advice. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Like, the T, I think there's a lot of elitism in the T14 design. Um, and, like, even if you think about it, the oldest schools tend to be at the top of that. And there's not a lot. I don't know. There's not a lot of give. There's not a lot of wheelie leeway. And for example, like you were mentioning with entertainment law, that's in this, in the grand scheme of law schools being a thing, entertainment law is new, right? Even though it's been a thing for decades. But I think, for example, the T14 and its kind of history um, of elitism doesn't account for newer industries. Um, And I think that's, there's something to be said for that too. So very good points. Um, I think the best mentor advice that I received was to actually pay attention to how much money schools were giving you, um, unless you have someone to pay for it for you. Um, I, one of my mentors, for example, she was like, oh yeah, my grandmother paid my entire way through law school. And I was like, amazing. I wish I had that. And she was like, I know so many people who did not have those resources and then ended up having to work in industries that they didn't love um, just to pay off their debt. So. Mine, mine had a lot to do with, with money. Um, and then other than obviously online classes, um, do you have any worries or fears about the upcoming semester? <laughs> My biggest fear is like not getting the grades I need the first semester because mm-hmm. I'm one of those people that is like banking on doing like super good my first semester and getting a job and just like sticking with that job <laughs> until I graduate. That's really my plan. Yep. So that's scary to me. Like just not getting the grades. Yeah. That's fair. I'm sure you will get the grades. Um, but that's a, it's a very valid fear. And I think um, folks that go to law school like tend to be perfectionists um, and they tend to be very, you know, high achieving individuals. Um, and I'm sure that neither of us are no exception to that. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, and let's see. So what are you most, what are you looking forward to most in terms of law school? 
Um, I think just being in law school. I don't know. Like, I've waited so long. I think for me, just actually, like, being in law school and being able to go to class and, like, meet new professors and meet, like, other law students, it's just, like, the entire process to me is exciting. I'm yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I think, um, so, and I think we're both applicants or we're both law students who are entering a little bit like later as if you could call it that I don't consider myself to be old in any way um, I don't consider you to be old in any way but in the grand scheme of like the average age of law student law students we are in our later 20s um, which puts us on the older side but what is one you know what's what's kind of one of the reasons that why you applied as a student with work experience or as a potential law student with a little bit more under your belt. And mind you, I'm sitting largely in the same perspective. So mostly coming from like a, I'm with you on this, totally like wanting to learn. I know where I stand on it. Where are you? Yeah. So for me, like I've always wanted to be an attorney. I always knew I was going to law school. I think that my life just like took a lot of tosses and turns and just twists and just a lot of things. And I think for me, like, I always, like, honestly, I tried to make everything too perfect. And when I just started, like, letting things, like, just flow, it was like, okay, now it's time to go to law school. Because before, I was, like, driving myself crazy. Like, I have to do this. I have to do that before I go. And then when I was just, like, just study for the LSAT and just apply, everything worked out. So I think I was just, like, I wanted everything to be perfect before I went. And it's still not perfect. Now we have COVID. But yeah. 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 That's definitely, that's a good point. Um, and the reason why I decided to apply in my later twenties, and I think I, I, I did something similar and I really stressed myself out those years between me graduating from undergrad and applying to school. And I really like, I think I, I feel like I punished myself and I was like, Oh no, I need to do this. And that kind of put too much pressure on me and made me not want to do it or made me not apply you know, and just kind of keep putting off taking tests and, you know, putting off the entire process year after year. Um, and honestly, this year, I just told myself, look, if I don't apply this year, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> and I felt like I had more of a plan with what I wanted to do job wise. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. And here I am. So makes sense. Other than the potential career field that you want to go into are there any other like big reasons why you wanted to go to law school um I don't know like I've literally wanted to be a lawyer since I was like six so I think That's me, awesome. I, I, yeah, I myself being anything else and I've like worked in a lot of other jobs like I've worked in real estate I've worked in procurement I've worked at a law firm I've worked in sales I've done like everything and I'm just like yep law school is for me nothing else is <laughs> enjoyable to me so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, for me, I actually didn't always want to go to law school. I decided in, I think, undergrad when we were picking majors, I was like, oh, I don't like science that much. So I'll do political science, which I think is how a lot of people end up studying political science. Um, but I was like, oh, I'm in DC. Like, it, it just makes sense. And um, I went to a pre law event with one of my friends and somehow, you know, ended up by the end deciding like, oh, maybe I'll go to law school. Didn't really have a plan for it. So I was like, okay, I need to actually figure out what I want to do with this. It doesn't make sense to go six figures into debt and not know what I'm going to do with it. Um, but then I started working where I work and I, you know, kind of saw like a clear trajectory on how to get there. And I think especially like as a woman, as a woman of color, you have a, if you have a law degree, you have a very um, known and, um, kind of standard set of skills and knowledge that people understand. Um, and that definitely gives you an edge in any work environment and space. And that was one of my other reasons too. So what concerns do you have about um, online law, ca law classes generally? <laughs> so I work from home now, but I work from home like before COVID. I've been working from home since like August, 2018. And just like, honestly, for me, I don't focus well at home. I make my own hours at home. I kind of do what I want. I get my job done, but I do what I want. Mm -hmm. And so, and if, you know, in law school, I'll do the same thing. And I can't get the grades I need doing what I want. So <laughs> I need the structure of going to class. So, yeah. yeah. And, and so in terms of like the, and I know that some schools have done this and a lot of schools are in a different place. Has the school that you plan to attend like released any information on what they're planning to do this fall and has that like eased or helped or anything like that? If I answer that question, people will know which school I'm going okay, to. Okay, fair enough. Never mind. We won't go there. Um, 
<laughs> don't want to press you too much on that one. Uh, so my concern with Zoom is um, one, I, I'm not super fond of like having to go through this entire process by myself. Like the social aspect of law school is half of the value of law school. Um, and, you know, meeting the other people that you have in class and all of that, like that is, I can't wait. Um, but I'm also concerned about like maybe professors that are not as tech savvy and them not designing their class around an online for, you know, like an online format and then me having not as great of an experience because of that. Um, so that's one part of it. And then I'm also concerned just kind of generally that students, for example, like students that don't have good Wi-Fi or don't have good computers or things like that, like I am fortunate in that that is not a problem for me, but for some students, like that is a problem and it could leave some students kind of behind before they've even started. So that's like terrifying. Um, so let's see, why don't we move to, if you could give yourself one piece of advice, um, just in retrospect on applying to law schools, what would it be? To start studying for the LSAT earlier. Okay. Mm -hmm. so like be, oh yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, just be consistent because I studied for the LSAT like three or four different times, but I would have started like this time. I would have started, cause I think I started studying in like, was it June or July? Maybe even August, honestly. And I took the test in October, November. I would have started studying in like February or March. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and what was, I guess, what is your reason for like studying for it earlier? I'm, I'm guessing that has to do with like admissions, test score, or not test scores, admissions and scholarships and things like that, or? Money, yeah, it was money. Yeah, yeah. so like, the, I got into the schools that I really wanted to go to, oddly enough, so that wasn't it. It was just more so money. Like, yeah. I think less negotiating, and I probably still would have ended up with more money if I had a higher LSAT, because my GPA wasn't good, my undergrad GPA, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. I think testing is one of the biggest pains in the butt, um, for me at least, and I think that's, I would, I would definitely tell myself to study a little bit more for standardized tests. Um, I would also tell myself to like chill a little bit more about the process because it's, it's extremely stressful. And a lot of it is it's, you know, I think schools are, have business aspects um, to adhere to when it comes to how much money they give out, whether, you know, like things like that. Um, and I would encourage myself to kind of look at the bigger picture instead of kind of focusing out on, Oh, it's me. It's me all the time. Like, and just kind of seeing, no, like there's, you know, these schools have numbers that they have to adhere to and they have, you know, certain requirements that they have to maintain as their standard. So, um, and then I guess my last question is, you know, on being a black woman in law school, um, what are you looking forward to? What are, you know, what does it mean to you? So I'm looking forward to like, it, this is so backwards, but like, you know how your first year you have some of those difficult conversations, you discuss those difficult cases. I'm actually looking forward to like speaking up, doing those conversations. Like I'm looking forward to like, I don't know, like making my voice heard, joining organizations and like, you know, trying to give back to other people and help other people that are trying to go through this process as well. They're also black, also women. So, so just like looking forward to being able to like give back to other people. I only had like three people I was watching on YouTube that were black women and yep. Kind of transparent, kind of not, so. Yeah, that's fair. And I think, I think um, one of the toughest things um, to be really transparent about is test scores. Mm -hmm. Because I think there's such a stigma around test scores and being a, you know, black applicant to law school and the misconception that you don't need to meet certain requirements because you are a black student and, have you know, like, people kind of giving affirmative more affirmative action more credit than they give you as a hardworking person who got to the heights that you achieved. Um, that is huge to me. Um, and also one of the reasons why I kind of got involved in this space, because I, I don't think there's a lot of transparency around that. So yeah, I think my at least being a black woman in law school, I think the past, obviously, couple of weeks slash month or so has been 
all that I need to kind of be the, the a push in inspiring me to continue on the path that I'm going down. Um, but that aside, you know, I think there's, there's a, we've got a long way to go. And when you put yourself on this side of the law as a black person, you're making a very conscious choice and it's not one that you should take lightly. Um, and I, I don't mean like you, I just mean like ominous you as, as a, as a being. Um, and it's not one that I take lightly and it's just, there's so much potential, I think, um, especially when you look at what black women have accomplished when they do kind of get these opportunities. And I, that's mostly what I'm looking forward to. Um, but I think those are, we covered all of the questions that I have. And um, were there any other things that you wanted to discuss or any things about your process that you want to highlight or anything like that? No, I have one question for you then. What made you choose Georgetown? So um, I applied to Yale, Harvard, Columbia, and NYU and Georgetown. Uh, I got waitlisted for every school except for Georgetown. And Georgetown hit me with a like six figure scholarship. So I was like, all right, that's, that's, I need really nothing else to convince me to, to go. Um, but I didn't apply to any other schools in DC. Um, and I think if I could go back in time, I would, you know, be a little wiser about that and <laughs> give myself a little more leeway. Um, but you know, the reason and part of the reason I'm going to Georgetown is, again, the convenience and the money. Um, I'm going to still keep my job while I'm going to school. The campus is like a 15 minute walk from my job. So I'm going to be going um, for their evening program. And that leads to less debt. Again, money is a really big thing for me. And, you know, an overall just experience where I don't have to rock my world as much. Um, I don't have to move things like that. So, I mean, to an extent, like, yes, I think it is a little bit, <laughs> a little bit lazy of me to have that be kind of the bulk of my decision. But I mean, that's, you know, that's where I am. So. Is there an evening program that much different than the regular program? No. So you can actually switch between the two. Um, if you, so if you get into the evening program, you can, I could decide today, like, Hey, I want to switch to the daytime program. The exact same thing. Um, so no, the only difference is you take classes after work rather than during the day. Um, and then you spread out your credits over up to four years. Um, but you can graduate in three years if you want to. So. Okay. So it's a win-win. Yeah. It's, it's the exact same thing. Um, yeah, but that's, you know, and that's another reason why Georgetown was attractive. And I think, and not many schools have evening programs. I know Fordham university in New York does, um, GW university in DC does, so I figured, I mean, if I'm going to shoot my shot, I'm going to try to go to, you know, what's the most convenient for where I am. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, for the people that are watching this on my channel, do you want to like tell them your channel? And everything? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I didn't even think about that. Um, okay. So <laughs> I should have started with that. My channel is Drea Jacke. That's D-R-E-A-J-A-C-K-E-E. -E -E. Um, I started talking about law school in a kind of admissions process series. And I've done a couple of collabs. This is one of those. Um, but I also do videos about other things. And that's pretty much I got. That's all I got. So okay. yeah, but thanks for taking the time. I really okay, appreciate guys, it. So that is the end of the video. Only one more thing I wanted to talk about. I don't know if you guys remember in my social distancing video that I did. I don't know. It was like a few months ago, but pretty much in that video, I mentioned that I was like buying all these books, which I did. I have all the books over there, but I was like sitting down trying to read them and I'm not good at just like sitting and reading. It's not my thing. Probably need to work on that before classes start. But what I did do is I went ahead and got like a free audible trial. And when I was on my way to Charlotte, I listened to Just Mercy on there. Also, I'm like trying to go vegan i'll let you know how that goes but i've been listening to like vegan books on there and then in terms of law school there's like a hundred i don't know more than a hundred there's hundreds of law school books on there as well so i do have like a link that you guys can use keep in mind this part of the video is sponsored but it doesn't hurt you to use the link it does help me out a little bit though but you will just visit audibletrial.com slash law and life and law and life is just l-a-w-a-n-d-l-i-f-e so yeah guys if you want to use that link to just try out audible definitely it will be down below and of course again it is just audibletrial.com slash law and life so yeah if you have any questions comments whatever leave them down below i will see you guys in my next video bye y'all